Cine EI, what, why, and how. I'm not gonna try to hook you into this video. Hopefully you clicked on it because you have a genuine interest in knowing about Cine EI. And I'm gonna try to keep it as quick as I can, but if it gets long, um, obviously there's gonna be chapter markers, timestamps, so jump around if you need to. I'm going to explain the what and the why as best I can, but the most important thing I can do is show you how to do it. And there's two components, which might seem obvious, but I'm just trying to make this as basic as possible when working with Cine EI. And that's what you do in camera and what you do in post. And there's two very distinct steps that you need to do in order to get the optimal result. And I'll walk you through both of those. Before we get into that, let's talk about what and why. Cine EI is just a way to expose your image. It's a way to ensure that you're getting the cleanest, least amount of noise that you can from the sensor while optimizing the dynamic range for the scene that you're capturing. You've probably heard of exposed to the right or ETTR. A lot of people recommend that you ETTR with Sony S-Log3 and depending on who you're watching, depending on the scene that they're, that they're capturing, you might hear them say expose plus one stop or plus two stops or plus 1.7. It always varies, it always changes. Essentially, when you are exposing to the right in a normal method, you are just boosting the exposure and looking at a very bright overexposed image on your display. And then when you go into post-production, you're gonna bring that exposure down. The reason for doing that is the sensor of your camera is probably is noisy in the underexposed areas, typically. So in order to get rid of that noise in underexposed areas, we sort of bring up the overall exposure of the entire image, and then in post, we darken it. So you can do the same thing in Cine EI, but what it allows you to do is actually see the image that you're going to get, as opposed to looking at a, an overexposed image and you're sort of just guessing. You can actually see the result that you're gonna get in the end. But it's not the exposure that your camera's actually capturing, and I think that's where it gets a little bit confusing. Not only can you ETTR, but in some instances you might want to ETTL or expose to the left, and Cine EI allows you to do that. Every camera sensor has a finite amount of dynamic range, maybe it's better to think of it this way, an amount of light that it can capture cleanly. While the dynamic range is finite, what actually can switch is the amount of information that the camera can capture above middle gray and below middle gray. And Sony has this little handy chart here for S-Log3 showing you the finite amount of dynamic range, and I think it's like 15 stops or 16 stops for this instance. At the base ISO of the camera, so 800 ISO in this case, you have so many stops above middle gray and so many stops below middle gray. But as you notice, as you increase the ISO, you get more information that's a, that the camera can capture above middle gray, that is in the highlight information, and you get fewer stops below middle gray. As you decrease the ISO, you get more information in the shadows and less information in the highlights. That may seem counterintuitive because we're all trained to boost the ISO when we need more exposure, when we need to brighten the image, and we decrease the ISO when we need to decrease the exposure if it's too bright outside, for instance. But keep this knowledge in the back of your mind. As you boost the ISO, this camera sensor actually becomes more sensitive to light and less sensitive to shadow information and vice versa. While Cine EI is just a method for exposing your image, it is locking you into the two base ISOs of the camera, in this instance, the FX30. So when you are in Cine EI mode or Cine EI quick, and we'll go through the differences between those later, you only have two ISO options, 800 in the low base and 2500 in the high base. And if you're on the FX3, it's gonna be 800 and 12,800. So no matter what you do to the EI value, as you increase or decrease that, the exposure on the monitor is going to change, but the ISO value that the camera is actually at will not change. You can think of it like film if anybody's old enough to have shot with a film camera, and I don't mean like a movie camera, but just a regular stills camera. When you buy a roll of film, it's rated at a certain ISO or ASA, same thing. You have no ability to change the ISO after the fact, it's just baked into the film. So if you are going out on a bright sunny day, you probably get what's called slow film at maybe 50 ISO or 100 ISO, whatever. If you're going out at night, uh, you'll get a fast film, something that's rated at over a thousand ISO. The high ISO film is going to be noisy, it's gonna be grainy, that's just the result of it. The very low ISO film at 50 or 100 is going to be super clean with very little grain. The thinking behind Cine EI is that the camera has a base ISO or maybe two base ISOs where you're going to get the cleanest result from the sensor. If you know that you're going to have plenty of light to shoot with, you go in the low base ISO. If you 
don't have enough light to shoot with, you go in the high base ISO, but those are the only two choices you have because Sony wants you to get the cleanest image from the sensor as possible. In Cine EI, if you're in this scene right here, I know I need to prioritize the shadow information. I don't want noisy shadows in this image. So I'm gonna go with a low EI value and then I'm just gonna increase the exposure with other methods. My aperture is as wide open as it can go at 1.8. My shutter speed is at 148th. I don't wanna change that. So I just have to add light. It's obviously gonna be a lot easier to show you rather than tell you. So now that we know what and why, let's look at how. I didn't mention before, but when you're in Cine EI, the only picture profile that you can use is S-Log3. So that's what you're gonna be locked into. So let's go ahead and take a look at the menus and see where everything is and how to get things set up. Everything that we need is gonna be here in this main one and main two. This is the new shooting menu from the FX30 and the FX3. And down here in main two, the top left-hand option is the log shooting setting. And this is where the Cine EI options are gonna be. So if you go to, pick, if you go to log shooting off, obviously you're not gonna have S-Log3 and you're not going to have any Cine EI settings. Here you also have flexible ISO, so if you don't want to use Cine EI, but you do want to use S-Log3, you can go into the flexible ISO mode, and this works just like any other regular shooting mode that you're used to. You can see down here we just have ISO 2500, and as you scroll through, switching the ISO and you're switching the exposure because the ISO is in fact changing, so this is just like any other mode that you're used to shooting on any Sony camera or any other camera for that matter. Back into the log shooting menu, here you have Cine EI and Cine EI Quick. I'm gonna go to Cine EI and then run through Cine EI Quick last so we can see the differences between them. So we're gonna select Cine EI, I'm gonna come up to main one, and then over here in the base ISO option, have to select between the low and high base. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the low base. Where the ISO is typically displayed looks a little bit different. We're in the low base of 800 ISO, and we're at 800 EI. So this is going to look just like if we were actually in 800 ISO in another shooting mode. The next set of numbers and letters shows us the available latitude above middle gray. So at 800 EI, we have six stops of latitude or dynamic range above middle gray. And then the last letter here where it says L, that lets us know that we are in the low base ISO of 800. So I'm going to increase my EI, so now it says 1000 EI, and you can see that second number changed to 6.3. So as you increase the EI, as you brighten the exposure, on the monitor anyway, uh, you're actually getting more stops of latitude above middle gray. Scroll all the way through to the, the maximum value is 3200 EI. At that value, we have eight stops of latitude above middle gray. And then going in the other direction, so now back to the base of 800, at 640, we're at 5.7 stops, so we're losing information in the highlights, but we're gaining information in the shadows. And the lowest value here is 200, so there we have only four stops of latitude above middle gray, but seven or eight probably, I can't do math, um, below middle gray. Now if we go back into the main menu, we can switch over to the high ISO or the high base. And coming out of there, you can see how that L switched to an H, so that lets us know that we are in the high base. And coming up to 2500, so this will be the same as if we were in 800, we've got six stops above middle gray. And even though these EI values will go much higher, the amount of latitude above middle gray will stay relative to where you have it at the low base ISO. Hopefully that makes sense. So all the way at the top at 10,000 EI, we've got eight stops over just like in the low base at 3200, I believe it is, you have eight stops over. And then going the other way, again, just like in the low base at 2000, we've got 5.7. And then the minimum value we have here is 640. And that will match up with the same latitude that you have at 200 EI in the low base. At 2500, we're kind of our starting point here. And I'm gonna hit record. So you can see, I'm gonna show you the actual recorded image. So as I change this EI value, of course, you can see on the back of the LCD or on the LCD that the exposure is changing, but the actual recorded image is not changing at all. So that's Cine EI, and going back into the menu, I'm going to go to Cine EI Quick and show you how that works really quickly. You know, here we are at 2500 EI. It all looks the same, but what happens here uh, between 1600 and 1250, you can see it's switched over to the low base. So this is actually switching over between 2500 ISO and 800 ISO right here at 1250 and 1600. I'll show you that in the recording. So now we're recording. 
you can see we're in the high base here. So we're at 2,500 ISO here. And now at 1250 EI, it's switched over to 800 ISO. A couple differences between Cine EI and Cine EI Quick. Quick will actually switch between the two ISOs. You don't have to go back into the menu and choose it manually. If you want to get a high exposure index in the low base, you can only go up to 1250, whereas if you're in the regular Cine EI, you can go all the way up to 3200. So as you go up to 3200, you'll, you'll already be in ISO 2500, and potentially your image is going to be noisier, potentially. Uh, I haven't really checked that, but that would be my guess. And then if you wanted to go into a low Cine EI value in the high base, you oh, it can only go so low. You can only go down to 1600 before, of course, it's gonna switch down into the lower ISO value. So hopefully that makes sense. And you can see any other value that's not 1250 and 1600, the exposure is not gonna change. The actual recorded exposure is not gonna change. Only the LCD is changing. And then when we get to 1250 and 1600, that's when the ISO actually does change. So it's only that one change right there. So now we know how to set everything up or we know where everything is in the menu. Now let's look at how it actually works in practice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get three exposures. I'm gonna get a, an exposure at the base EI or the base ISO, and then I'm gonna get one at the highest threshold, and then I'll get one at the lowest threshold, and we'll compare how those look in post-production and how they look obviously when you, uh, when you set the exposure to how it looks on the LCD screen. We're in the low base, so we're at 800 ISO, and we're at 800 EI. And now I'm gonna get a proper exposure for this shot, and I'm gonna use a gray card to do it. Another thing that I didn't touch on before, if you're using Cine EI, it really works the best if you use some standardized method to expose your image. You can use a gray card, you can use a white card, you can use a piece of paper, or you can use a standard value for skin tones. If you wanna to use skin tones, then just make sure you're using the same IRE value every time so that you have a consistent uh, IRE level to re-expose your image, both when you're, I guess, to expose your image while you're actually capturing it and to match that exposure in post-production. And I have all the standard values for S-Log3 that you should be using to expose consistently and properly. And one other little detail to keep in mind is the IRE values are gonna change depending on whether you're using a monitor LUT. So if you're looking at a LUT on the LCD, or if you're not, if you're just looking at the S-Log3 uncorrected image. So I'll show you that real quick. So going back into the menu, right under where the base ISO is, you've got the select LUT option. And here it says S709. So this is the standard Sony 709 LUT. I'm going to expose for this gray card at a certain level. And if I have the S709 LUT, that level is gonna be between 44 and 45 IRE. If I don't have the LUT enabled, so here I'm just looking at S-Log3, in that case, it's gonna be at 41 IRE. So a little bit different. So again, I'll have all these on screen. You're probably looking at them now. And I'll also put them in the description so you can just copy them down for future reference if you need to. In order to get the appropriate exposure, we're just gonna use custom zebras. So I'm gonna go in here to my zebras. I'm just gonna use custom one standard range and set this to 44 plus or minus one. There we go. And so right here on this gray card, you can see we're getting those zebras. So somehow I managed to get this set up without merely making any changes uh, to the exposures. Now normally in what I'm shooting, I would also make sure that I'm not blowing out highlights, but I'm not gonna worry about that for this demonstration for a couple of reasons. And I'll kind of come back to that later on when we're in post-production phase. We can change our ISO, right? It's locked in at 800. So in order to change the exposure, obviously we could uh, change our aperture. That looks about right. And then of course we could increase or decrease our shutter speed. And then lastly, we could add or, or subtract light if that's possible. If you had an ND filter, of course, you could change that as well. So that looks good there. So I'm just gonna roll this. And if you're using a gray card or white card, you definitely wanna have that in the shot that you're recording for at least a few frames so that you can reference it when you're trying to adjust the exposure in post. So I'll just take that out. I'm going to increase the EI to 3200. And I'm gonna put my little gray card back in. So now the monitor image is much brighter. So in order to compensate for that, we're going to have to either close down the aperture or close down the shutter or decrease the light output. So let's try, let's try lowering the light. I don't think I can lower the light enough, all right? So let's try our shutter. So now the exposure is set. 
Gonna roll there. Now going the opposite way, let's get an exposure for 200 EI. Open the shutter back up to 148th to start with. So maxed out my light and then open the shutter up again to 125th. And that looks pretty good. Roll there. We've got our three exposures, so let's go ahead and jump into the editing software. Whatever you use, it doesn't really matter. They should all work pretty similarly for adjusting the exposure. I'll also show you how you can use the Catalyst Browse or Catalyst Prepare software to do this, and it actually kind of does it automatically because the CineEI metadata is baked into the file, so it can make those changes for you automatically and export the exposure compensated image for you. I have my three images in Resolve. Here is the 800 EI, here's the 3200 EI, and lastly, here's the 200 EI. And it's really weird because as we were exposing, looking at the back of the LCD, when we first boosted up to 3200 EI, obviously the LCD was much brighter versus the 200 EI, which was much darker. But remember, that's not the recorded exposure. That's just the image we're looking at. And so we were compensating for the change in the LCD by adding or subtracting exposure in a different way. And here is the resulting image. So now what we're going to do is in the case of the uh, 3200 EI, we're going to boost that exposure back up to where the gray card was, where we were exposing in camera. And for the 200 EI, we're going to reduce the exposure to match where we were actually exposing in camera. You might notice I the white balance is quite off. I guess I forgot to set my white balance, but another good thing about using a white or gray card is that you can easily white balance. So I'm just gonna grab the dropper here. And yeah, you can see that we're way off in terms of the RGB values, but I'll just hit that little white card and now we should be in pretty good shape. And I'll just go ahead and do that with this one and see. I might have to adjust again later, but anyway, but that'll let us see that gray card much more clearly. Uh, which should be right here, this kind of like line here. All we need to do is adjust those exposures so that they match where they should be in camera. So the 800 EI one should be right on the mark. So it was supposed to be at 46 IRE, and that's about where we are. Uh, I know Resolve has, uh, you know, the hundreds and thousands place as opposed to just the tens place, but, uh, you know, same thing, just take off the last digit and you'll you'll be in good shape there. That's what it should look like. And I'm gonna grab a still here. And then coming over here, so now I need to raise this up to match. So I'm just gonna get my offset here and increase this exposure until it's sitting about where the other one was. I'm just going to compare real quick. So yeah, these look pretty close. Right there, all right. And then we'll do the same. So this one we're obviously gonna bring down till it's sitting right in line. And just close these down. So here we have 800 exposed right down the middle, essentially. Here's 3200 exposed much darker and 200, which was exposed much brighter. So now let's take a look at how we benefited from that, if in, if in fact we did. Here's the 800. This image looks pretty good. Looks pretty clean. If I can zoom in a little bit. And take a look at the places that are supposed to be really dark. Everything's looking pretty good. This is actually not too bad. There's a little bit of noise, but of course you're always gonna see some noise potentially coming over to the 3200. Wow, okay, <laughs> super noisy. So that's why Sony doesn't really recommend that you use an exposure index value higher than the base ISO most of the time. There is a benefit, and I'm going to show you the benefit of it, but obviously there's some significant downsides because it's adding in a ton of noise, just as if we actually did boost the ISO. And then last, here's the 200, and you can see, wow, that's really, really clean. Super clean, even less noise, um, where we could see a little bit of noise dancing around here in this wall. There's no noise, practically nothing whatsoever. It's very clean. So this would be the main benefit, in my opinion, for using Cine EI most of the time is actually using a Cine EI value that's lower than the ISO and then bringing that exposure down. So this is like exposing to the right, but
But again, because we're using a gray card and we're being very deliberate about how we're doing it, we know that we're going to get the results uh, very easily. So you can see just how easy that was. It was just a matter of matching the exposure that we were looking at on the display to the exposure that we, that we ended up with. And it was just bringing it down or boosting it up. Very easy to do. About the benefits of the 3200 EI is going to come in the highlights, obviously. So here we are at the 200 EI. If I wanted to just, and I'm just going to do this very blunt force, not really very specific or very controlled, but just to show you, I'm going to try to bring the highlights down. And this is going to affect the whole image. But so take a look at that window and you can see the information that we have here. So it's not looking particularly nice on the 200 EI. And I'm going to jump over to the 800 EI, bring the gain down. So that's looking better. You can see there's more information to be gained, <laughs> to be had in the 800 EI. And then here in the 3200 EI, significantly more information in the highlights. So there you go. It does have a benefit, but there's obviously a push and pull depending on the overall image. You can use a higher EI value than the base ISO, but I would only do it if you have a, a very bright exposure overall. But the, the highlights look tremendous. <laughs> There's a lot of information. So again, just to compare, that's the 200, looks like trash. That's the 800, looks okay. That's the 3200, looks pretty amazing. However, in the shadows, 200 looks the best. Um, let me reset the gain. 3200 doesn't look good at all. And 800 looks pretty good, if not really good, but it's not as good as 200. In Catalyst Browse, I'm not an expert in how the software works. I don't even know how to import multiple things, but I'm just gonna select them one at a time. So here should be the 800 one. Uh, I'm just gonna click Adjust Color. And over here in the exposure, this will show you the ISO of 800 and it shows you the exposure index at 800. You can adjust this if you want to right here in Catalyst Browse. Uh, you can come all the way up to plus nine and a third so you can get more exposure index if you want out of Catalyst Browse. Let's go back to, so this is the 3200 EI and you can see right here, 3200, perfect. This has already adjusted the exposure for us. And lastly, here is the 200, just color. And you can see right here, it's already adjusted to 200. So that's the cool thing about Catalyst Browser, Catalyst Prepare, that you can save a little bit of time. If you want to export these with that already baked in, it's very simple. You just hit the export button, obviously pick your destination, but your output color space you want to make sure is, you know, Rec 709. Because if you change it to S Gamut 3, uh, S Log 3, then it's just going to be, it's not going to include the exposure adjustments. It's just going to give you the raw S Log 3 image straight out of camera. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you learned something. Now, do you have to use Cine EI? No. I mean, Sony is the only, only camera system that has this mode of exposing built into its cameras. And it's obviously not the only camera system that you can get a good exposure with. So you don't have to use it. It definitely is something that's a little bit more involved, a little bit more deliberate and it might not be appropriate in every circumstance. One limitation might be the gear that you possess. So if the window behind me, if the sun was coming in much brighter and I wanted to ensure that my shadows were as clean as possible, I might not have a bright enough key light to make that happen. It really just depend on how bright the window is on any given day. I might not be able to use a low enough Cine EI value to ensure that my shadows are crispy and perfectly black <laughs> or perfectly clean. Uh, so I'll have to bring up the Cine EI value a little bit and the resulting image is gonna be just a little bit noisier. Sometimes we just can't get perfect results depending on the circumstances, depending on the gear that we have.